Another legal twist in the case against a woman accused of suffocating her boyfriend to death by zipping him up in a suitcase. As her trial was delayed yet again, Sarah Boone appeared in a Florida courtroom Monday with her new attorney. Her previous attorney had enough of his client and asked the judge to remove him from the case. Judge, the, le the letters that have been coming to your honor, uh, the derogatory berating of my services in this case, uh, I can't effectively represent her. Uh, I, she doesn't trust me. She calls me a, a dud, I think, a buffoon, uh, on and on and on and on. And no one should have to endure that type of uh, derogatory comments and expect to effectively represent someone, especially in a murder case. In a letter written behind bars to Judge Wayne Wooten, Boone expressed her frustrations about her previous attorney, Frank Bankowitz, writing, quote, so confused, so tired of the perpetual question marks over my head. It's funny how the only piece of correspondence via mail I've actually received from Bankowitz is his motion to withdraw as counsel. What is going on? I've tried to dilute some of the question marks, but need you, Judge Wooten, to help me get it correct and begin my preparation. But Boone's then defense attorney fired back in a motion to withdraw as counsel. Bankowitz wrote, quote, due to irreconcilable differences, he'll be unable to effectively and properly continue representing Boone, adding the defendant will not be satisfied with any attorney unless said attorney does not have a caseload. Continuing, the best possible avenue is to have the defendant represent herself as no attorney can satisfy her. In September, the judge granted Bankowitz's motion to withdraw, appointing a public defender to take over her case. Ms. Boone, <clears throat> I read your letter dated August 26, 2023, and your letter dated August 30th, 2023. And just so we're clear, I read all of the letters that you send to the court. Whether I respond or not is based on what's in the letter and whether I'm asked to actually do something that's within my purview as a judge or not. If I understand correctly, you have now decided that you think it would be best, in fact, if Mr. Bankowitz was allowed to withdraw. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And you understand by him withdrawing, I'll have to appoint another attorney. Do you understand that? I do. And that attorney is not standing here, so we're not going to be able to address, and I'll give the state a chance to talk to me as well, but... Assuming I grant this, we won't be able to address the other issues that were docketed for today, which means I'm going to have to reset your case for a later date. I'm going to grant Mr. Bankwitz's motion to withdraw. I'm going to appoint find my list. attorney Winston Hobson to represent Ms. Boone. Defense attorney turnover rate has been high for Boone, who has cycled through more than four different lawyers since her 2020 arrest. In 2022, another attorney withdrew from representing Boone in her case. Boone claimed to be in the dark about her then-attorney's withdrawal, writing in another letter to the judge. After making a commitment to me as an attorney over the past two years and two months ongoing, to fully and sufficiently represent me also made me to believe we were a team, she wrote. I am completely blindsided nonetheless in how this was and is being handled by a professional. I don't understand. The frequent occurrence even prompted the judge overseeing her trial to issue a stern warning that the problem might not be the attorneys. But one thing I want to caution you about, if this becomes a problem on another court appointed attorney, I'm going to look more closely at what the alleged disputes are. You have a right to a court appointed lawyer. There are certain decisions a defendant gets to make in the defense of their case that are absolutely theirs, such as whether they go to trial or not, such as whether they testify or not. But there are many decisions in a case that a lawyer gets to make. And while you certainly have a right to consult with your lawyer and discuss with your lawyer, they don't automatically just do whatever you say. They use their professional judgment and experience and look at the evidence, look at the law, and do the best they can. Sarah Boone has been behind bars since her arrest in February of 2020, charged with the heinous death of her boyfriend, Jorge Torres. He was found lifeless inside a suitcase at the couple's apartment. The gruesome death was captured on video taken by Boone herself, 
showing the chilling final moments of Torres's life as he cried to be freed from inside the suitcase. Hello. For everything you've done to me. Hello. For everything you've done to me. Hello. F you. Hello. F you. Hello. <laughs> Stupid. Hello. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Hello. I can't breathe. Hello. Hello. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. Investigators say the video showed the suitcase facing downward. However, a second video shows the suitcase in a different position, suggesting it had been moved. Sarah. Court records later reveal Boone and Torres were painting pictures and completing a puzzle while sharing wine when they decided to play a game of hide and seek. Boone would later tell police once they responded to the scene, she assumed Torres would be able to get out, so instead she went to bed, later finding him the next morning lifeless, still zipped up inside the suitcase. I fell asleep, okay. forgetting that he was so in you the suitcase. Were playing the hide and go seek. Yes. And at some point you put him in the suitcase? No, he got in the suitcase. So okay. he thought it'd be funny to be put in the suitcase. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna joke with you and I'll zip you up and make him, you know, squirm a little bit, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. Where was the suitcase? Right where he it got is. In it, right down there? Yes. You zipped him in there? Yes. Thought he would be funny, a little joke. It was, we both were laughing about it. Okay. And then I fell asleep. Where did you fall asleep at? Upstairs. In your bedroom? Yes. Okay. Totally forgetting that he was in the suitcase still. Okay. And then you came back downstairs. This morning or this afternoon, yes, when I got up. Park, what time? 12, 30-ish. I was awake, but I totally forgot that he was in the suitcase. But that fatal alleged mistake would end up with Boone's boyfriend dead and the suspected killer behind bars. During Boone's police interrogation, she denied zipping the suitcase entirely, despite video evidence showing investigators the opposite. Also in the video, you can't see any holes. There's nowhere in that where the zipper separates and you can see a hole. If there's a hole, he's pushing on it, begging you to get out. We should probably see that, that, that hole. That he essentially would have been able to get out. Huh. Alcohol. Based off what you're telling us, he should have yeah. been able to get out. Okay. But the video shows him attempting to get out, begging to get out, and he can't. So that's that's just what we're trying to figure out. I don't know if maybe you had too much to drink, you zipped it up all the way, and then, you know. I did not zip it up all the way. Okay, well. I did not zip it up all the way. This is horrific, okay? Horrific. It is terrible. Yeah, so horrific. I don't think I'll ever be right because of this. Ever be right. I didn't mean to leave him there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got up and walked away. How is that not intentionally leaving him there? Because I'm looking at the hole knowing that it's, a, it's there. He'll get out no problem. Because you don't. And then he doesn't. But the, you don't go check on him. You say you're up for 30 minutes and he doesn't come up. You don't go down and check on him? I'm in the bed. You even move. And so I mean, off. you move. You admit to moving the suitcase like over. So you roll it. You roll it over. Like it's not like I didn't want him to be me like that. Oh. Don't. What? You didn't want him to be upside down. How do you even get upside down? Right. You guys are killing me right now. According to an autopsy report, the medical examiner noted multiple injuries to Torres's body. He had long nail scratches on his back and neck, contusions on his shoulder, skull, and forehead, considered as blunt force trauma. Boone has maintained to police she did not mean for Torres to die. I promise you, on my son's life, it was not intentional. I promise you, on Lucas's life, it was not intentional. <clears throat> I don't know you. I can't say I know anything about you. I don't know what is, what would be a true statement or what not. I mean, you're promising on your son's life, that's fine. That's how much it means. Sorry. That's how much it, look, too. that's how much it means. Okay. I hope you take that to heart. 
She was ultimately charged with second-degree murder in Torres's death. She continues to be held without bond, and if convicted in trial, faces the rest of her life in prison. Boone was initially set to head to trial earlier this month, but with the constant changes of counsel, her trial kept getting pushed back. During Monday's hearing, the judge set a January date for the pre-trial conference, where the defense will be expected to set Boone's new trial date. Reporting for Law & Crime Network, I'm Elizabeth Milner.